ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the University of Wisconsin La Crosse Department of Music, we welcome you to Annette Recital Hall, where we present to you this evening the third and final night of the 2022 La Crosse New Music Festival, where we highlight our faculty members. Please take this time to mute all electronic devices, especially those that may make disruptive noise, and be sure to dim those that may have bright screens that may distract and disturb others. Remember eating, drinking, talking, and flash photography are prohibited. Again, welcome and enjoy the performance. Check, check, check. Thank you. Um, hello, I am David Deese, composer, professor of theory here, and director of the New Music Festival. In what has become a tradition this week, I'm giving you a second welcome to the festival. Um, tonight's program features a wide range of pieces featuring our faculty. It's going to be a great show. Um, I have been asked by my colleague, Mary Ellen Halpert, to let you know that there is a concert tomorrow at Viterbo of um, also new music in a cultural exchange with Greece. Uh, the Galan Trio will be performing at 3 o'clock, including a piece by Dylan Finley, who some of you may have known from his time here. Um, so just letting you know that's happening. Otherwise, um, welcome and please enjoy the concert. Hello. So Chen Yi's Fisherman's Song is a piece that she wrote in 1980. It's originally a piece for violin and piano. And this summer, she made the flute and piano version. Uh, so it is kind of hot off the press. Chen Yi is a Chinese composer. She studied in the Beijing Conservatory. She's from the famous class of 1978. Uh, she graduated with composers like Bright Sheng, and Tam Dun. Tam Dun, if you've ever seen Grouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, he wrote the soundtrack to that. And her husband, Zhou Long. Uh, both Zhou Long and Chen Yi teach at University of Missouri, Kansas City, where I did my graduate work. And so I had the privilege of working with both of them. Um, and so for this transcription specifically, I bought it over the summer. And I thought, yeah, this will be a great piece for, the, for this. Uh, in fact, I thought it would be a great piece for WSMA solos for high schoolers except for a few measures here and there were a little tricky, and then I listened to the violin original, and I thought, wait, why did she do this? So, <laughs> so I recorded my interpretation of her violin version, and she said, oh yeah, that sounds better. Uh, so that's the version we're going to be playing for you today. <laughs>
The composer of this piece, Simon Sargon, is an American composer of Persian and Indian descent. Um, he composed this piece in 2005. Um, Hafez was a Persian uh, famous spiritual teacher and poet. Um, his dates were 1320 to 1389. Um, he became known in the West um, largely because of Goethe, who remarked that Hafez has no peer. Um, this piece, um, I feel like, really expresses his wisdom and his joyous love for life. Um, one of his quotes is, uh, One regret, dear world, that I am determined to have when I am lying on my deathbed is that I did not kiss you enough. Thank you. 
Okay, I think we're set up there. Um, I'll be performing Go to the Garden, which is a brand new piece written by Eris Desjarnet. Uh, it was written, uh, and, uh, written in 2021 primarily and uh, premiered in March 2022. This will be the UWL premiere of this piece. Um, and I, I was part of a consortium led by Ashley Killam, who is uh, an amazing person and is leading all kinds of great uh, initiatives to uh, diversify uh, the music that gets played on stages all over the world. Um, and this is one of those projects. Um, Go to the Garden is, um, as it was written in the, in the pandemic, it was inspired by the need for um, spaces that are healing, uh, spaces that are uh, quiet, but not the kind of lonely spaces that all of us are all too familiar with from um, living through the greater part of this pandemic. So what you'll hear is, um, a, by design, uh, a sort of sonic environment that's inviting the audience into one of those quiet healing spaces. And then uh, a narrator was constructed to um, guide the listener into those spaces. And if anybody's done anything around um, trauma healing or those kind of mapping exercises, you might be familiar with some of the techniques um, used by the narrator. Uh, there's a, a spot in the middle where um, Everything kind of goes wrong, and then we come back home to a place of, of healing. Um, as such, the performer is also invited into a place of uh, flexibility. So this, uh, this piece is not intended to be like, here's the notes on the page. If you miss it, you're wrong and bad on you. Uh, there's all kinds of opportunities for options, right? There's, uh, the score is filled with, you could either play this note or this note, or if you're gonna play this note, take the rest of the phrase this way. In the middle of the piece, there's uh, an opportunity for improvisation using cells that the composer has predetermined. Um, so lots of flexibility. Also, there's, uh, this piece is modular, which means that it can be performed in three, uh, three, a three-minute version, a six-minute version, or a nine-minute version. All of this is designed um, to help the performer, right? And I was really drawn to, uh, to that idea, which I think is, is quite countercultural for the concert stage, to give the performer that much leeway um, in how it, how, how it goes, you know, pick your own adventure. So, hope you enjoy. This is Go to the Garden. Gather round. I want to tell you a story. Yeah, we flatten out. Thank you. Gather round. I want to tell you a story. so calm and pure that you cannot help but be at peace. Its gate may be trellis or stone. It may be intimate or never ending. But somewhere there is a garden began exploring, uncovering the garden in my mind.
of seedlings alongside a single bench grew into a lush landscape, a fountain the birds would drink from, magnolias stretching overhead, flowers bursting from every crevice, dense hedges on all sides to keep it secure. Even when the world around it grew dark, the garden remained bright and warm because I made it so. branch of my strongest tree splintered on the ground, rotted from the inside until it could no longer bear the strain. I fortified the tree, tended its neighbors, and told myself things would be better again soon. But the birds did not return. as life went by on screens and through windows, knowing that the one place meant for me was nothing more than a ghostly grove of sticks and brambles. One day, someone who truly loved me arrived home with a seedling in hand. A gift, they said. For once, long ago, I spoke of a garden, and I could not bear to tell the truth, so I led them down the path until it stood before us. An endless tower of thorns. step at a time, 
pruning carefully, seeking a new path. We arrived at the old bone dry foundation, and they knelt, planting the seedling at its base. We sat together on the lone bench, and a new quiet settled. I will be here to help, they whispered. So no matter the strain, you can bear it. Just listen. Can't you hear the birds? So this next piece, Leo, my up, thank you. Um, this next piece is by Emeritus Professor of Theory and Composition here, Christopher Fry. Um, it is for fixed media, which is what we say in the new, uh, the music, new music world when a piece has been pre-recorded. So there will be no performer on the stage. You will simply be hearing sounds that uh, Dr. Fry assembled in a digital audio workstation. Um, when I told him that I was asking people to give notes from the stage, he uh, said, could you please announce it for me? Uh, unfortunately, he can't be with us. He needs to be in Florida uh, this week for with someone who needs his, his uh, attention. Um, he's with loved ones this week. Um, so he said, um, I don't know if you've included program notes in the program, but if you do, um, please say that my piece is a sonic collage of primarily folk sound including Jamaican guitarist Joseph Spence, sacred harp shape note singers, and of course, trains.
Thank you very much. I'm uh, representing the bass clef tonight on this program, it looks like. And uh, I'm also representing the performer-composer category. I always uh, enjoyed hearing works by folks who were composers but also happened to play the instrument that they were writing for because they kind of knew the idiomatic tricks of the trade to make it work. And that's kind of what I'm going to be tackling tonight a little bit. This piece, The Grumpy Troll, was written about 10 years ago. Uh, there's, I'm actually from, I teach here, but of course I'm from Mount Horeb, just outside of Madison, and Mount Horeb is sort of this Norwegian colony, and we've got trolls all over the place, and our big brewery in town is called the Grumpy Troll. And so I was sitting in the Grumpy Troll, as you do, and I was looking at the little Grumpy Troll figurine, which gr trolls are not small, they're gigantic mountain-sized beasts, and I kind of looked at that troll and I kind of imagined what would that troll sound like. He had a very grumpy face, kind of a sad face. Hair was kind of all over the place. and Not a pretty picture. And a lot of the things we've heard tonight, I think, are actually stunningly beautiful pieces of music. This is going to be on the other side of that as well. <laughs> I, I like to take advantage of the ugliness sometimes, and I think that can be beautiful too. So people have asked me, this piece actually, I, I've written it about 10 years ago, like I said, and it's had a wonderful life. I was very fortunate to get it recorded and published right away, and it's it's on a lot of competitions. As a matter of fact, right now in Porsche, Italy, there's a competition for solo tuba in Europe, and uh, this is in the semifinal round, this piece. So I'm very happy that it's had the life that it's had. And a lot of people ask me, so tell me, what is going on in this piece? What's this troll grumpy about? And I tried to explain to them, it's, it's not really a story at all. It's just an abstract painting about this troll. It's kind of what I think the troll would sound like, smell like, feel like, all that stuff. So I hope you enjoy the grumpy troll. Oh, and I must also mention, there's another little element to this, and I might throw you off a little bit. The brass instruments, the trumpet, the tuba, all these instruments have these pipes that we can pull out to change the intonation of the instrument. Well, you can pull them all the way out, or in my case, it fell out one day, and I kind of discovered this new sound, and that helps really grab the nasal quality of the Grumpy Troll. So, with no further ado, I hope you enjoy the Grumpy Troll.
Sam Zeman was our 2017 guest artist for the New Music Festival. He is a Mexican composer uh, living in New York. He teaches music theory at Juilliard. He's written a lot of music for the flute, uh, which, by the way, I've recorded all of them, except for this piece. Uh, <laughs> uh, he was here for the festival. He was here also for the recording sessions. Um, this piece is uh, a 2022 piece. He wrote it as a commission from the Flute New Music Consortium. It was a great day for name picking uh, that day. Uh, but uh, they commissioned him, I think it was in 2019, to write a piece. And they got about 30 flutists together to, to join in the commission. And so we all have the right to play this piece this year. We got it all in December, and the premiere has happened in February. And then, of course, it hasn't been published yet, so we, we are the ones who have it. And after playing it in Colorado and Texas and in Mexico City, uh, we were talking uh, about Mackenzie's senior recital and what she could do. And, and I thought, you know, why don't we give this a try? And so she's had the music, and she's done a beautiful job playing this piece. And, and like in the other Zeman piece, he has, he has another piece for two flutes and orchestra. Both flutes have the same level of difficulty. So at some points, you won't know who's playing what. So please enjoy uh, Intuition by Sam Zeman.
uh, colleague, Dr. Borja, asked me to introduce my piece, which is the last piece on the festival. Uh, but before I do, I want to thank you all for coming. And I'd like to express a special thanks to those of you who made it to two and even three nights of great music this week. It's been a terrific first festival. And I'm looking forward to next year's already. It's been such a great experience this time around. Um, so thank you. And here comes the last piece. So the piece is entitled Tinnitus, or some people say Tinnitus, uh, which if you're not immediately drawing to mind what that is, it's ringing in the ears. And um, it is so called because there is an A that runs through the entire piece. And uh, at some point you will lose track of that A, just like when your ears are ringing, you don't always notice that it's there, but it's always there in the background. So. Please enjoy tinnitus. <laughs> 